All right, in this video, we're going to begin talking about translation, or excuse me, transcription, which is part of protein synthesis as a whole. And so the, in order to begin talking about that, we have to talk about general flow of information in uh, cells. And the way this works is um, you can kind of see this picture represents it really well. Sometimes this is called the central dogma of biology. Um, just because it's how proteins get manufactured and proteins pretty much control um, most of the functions in our bodies and our cells. And so you can see here DNA replicates itself. Um, RNA can also be replicated through processes. But this process of going from DNA to RNA to protein is what we're going to be talking about over the next several videos. First, looking at this process of transcription where DNA is basically red and red and can made into an RNA. Now I said made into, that's not really the best word choice because it's kind of like taking a textbook and copying a section, section of the textbook on a piece of notebook paper. You have transcribed the text. The textbook is unchanged. It remains unchanged in its original form, but you now have a cheap copy of a particular section of that text. And that's essentially what transcription is, is taking a section of the DNA and copying it and making an RNA out of it, which is like a disposable copy. And that copy represents a particular gene that is being copied so that the protein can be made. Um, so this is the two steps, transcription and translation. Both of these call what we call protein synthesis, um, the creation of a protein. We'll talk about translation in a couple videos, um, but for the next two, we're going to be talking about this process called transcription. And so there's transcription and translation together. Again, transcription going from the DNA to make a messenger RNA, which is what you see right here, and then translation is taking that RNA and making from it a protein. So a couple things here on this picture that we'll continue to use. Um, when transcription occurs, the DNA is split just like when uh, replication happens. Um, and only one of the strands are going to be used for that uh, transcription. Obviously, they're not an RNA is a single strand of molecule. And so both of these strands don't need to be used. The strand that is used is called the template strand. It can be called other things. Sometimes you'll see it called the non-coding strand, the antisense strand, the minus strand. Um, template strand is the best thing because it serves as the template for the RNA that's being made. Sometimes you'll see this other strand called the coding strand. Um, I'm not exactly sure on the language of that. My guess is that it's because it's very similar to the uh, RNA, except for every time there's a T, there's a U instead of that. And the strand serving as the template strand, again, is the gene that is being transcribed. It's not just a random area on the DNA, but it is just the gene that is being transcribed. And there's a, a particular enzyme that is involved in this process and it's called RNA polymerase. And essentially what RNA polymerase does is it will uh, move down the section of the gene, and as it's moving, it opens that strand up. It codes this template strand, or it uh, adds complementary bases based on what the template strand has. And so if there's an A, G, C, or T, it will counter that, a every time with a U, G with a C, C with a G, and T with an A accordingly, right? And notice the directionality here. The template strand is being read in a three prime to five prime direction, right? And these bases are being added in that opposite direction. So that is also important. Um, Moving on to, here's another picture of that. So again, you have the RNA polymerase moving from three prime to five prime, and then this is being added in the opposite direction so that it's continuing to get longer and longer. All right, so there are three kinds of RNA that we're gonna talk about in this class. 
actually we're going to talk about another kind, but these are the three main kinds. There's messenger RNA, and messenger RNA is the product of transcription. We're going to talk about some additional modifications that are made to the RNA to, to convert it into a full-blown mRNA. Um, this carries the genetic information to the ribosomes, which is where translation is going to occur. Um, and I, one thing I didn't mention about transcription, transcription occurs in the nucleus with the DNA. Obviously, the DNA doesn't leave the nucleus, and so transcription has to occur inside the nucleus, whereas translation occurs wherever there are ribosomes, which is not inside the nucleus. It's in the cytoplasm or on the endoplasmic reticulum. Um, so this mRNA is a contemporary copy of the gene. Um, it is broken up into three base units called codons. We'll talk more about that when we get to translation. Then there is rRNA or ribosomal RNA, and this is por a portion of the components of a ribosome. Ribosomes are made up of proteins and this RNA, and it's necessary in order for the messenger RNA and the ribosome to line up during translation. And then lastly, there's tRNA or transfer RNA. And basically what the tRNA does is it has these, this three bases here at the bottom called the anticodon, which will match up with the codon on the messenger RNA and will bring a particular amino acid associated with that codon, which we will talk more about that in a video on translation.